the path just as we are following. I arrived yesterday from Paris. I mean, I'm not the only one suffering from jet lag, but so you will have to forgive me. I collapse or something happens. <laughs> um, so, indeed, that's a, the title of my talk. And this is the golden triangle. It's not a very pretty triangle that I'd like to explore, but of course, the theory of this triangle belongs to René Girard's uh, major work. And in particular, you find this triangle described, analyzed in the conclusion to his major book, Violence and the Sacred. So you have violence, in particular in the form of the final apocalypse, or the apocalypse, let's say. The sacred, of course, and chance. That's a category I'd like to put the emphasis on here. And actually, the major topic, one of the major topics of my talk is the indeterminacy, indeterminacy. I'm translating from the German here, and the word is Unbestimmtheit, there are German speakers here, um, regarding the survival of humankind. I'd like to introduce to you this clock that you can see or find in Washington DC. It's called the Doomsday Clock. And in January um, 2007, it fell to famed physicist Stephen Hawking, famed maybe for bad reason, because as you know, bad reasons, he is incapacitated by Hungary's disease, but also England's astronomer royal, Sir Martin Rees, who incidentally occupies Newton's chair at Cambridge University, to offer the sober announcement, the world has inched two minutes closer to annihilation. It is now five minutes to midnight. Midnight meaning by convention, the apocalypse. In 1945, Manhattan Project physicists concerned about the destructive power of nuclear weapons founded a bulletin that still exists today called the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. And two years later, the magazine gave birth to the clock, the doomsday clock, setting the minute hand at seven minutes to midnight to illustrate the danger of a nuclear-armed race. And since then, the magazine's board of directors has pushed the minute hand back and forth 17 times. Here they are. <laughs> <laughs> so, in 1947, as I said, the minute hand was set to seven minutes to midnight, uh, reflecting the beginning of the nuclear era. Um, in 1953, that's when the minute hand was closest to midnight. 1953, that's when both the US and the Soviet Union had tested hydrogen bombs within nine months of each other. We are very close. To Armageddon. Um, and then there were a few series of oscillations. You see, in 1963, we were at 12 minutes to midnight. Oh, isn't it something, it's something strange here? Don't you see something strange? Cuba. Let me help you. Missing? Mm -hmm. Cuba. Yeah, of course. The Cuba, Cuba Missile Crisis, 1962. So why doesn't it appear? Doesn't it appear here? For a very good reason. It's not every month that the, the clock is uh, shifted, of course. And if you remember, the Cuba Missile Crisis lasted 14 days in I think, October 1962. So that was too short. But we were 10 seconds. 10 seconds. We'll, we'll hear McNamara in a, in, a, in a moment. 10 seconds to be done. There were then oscillations. 1984, very close to midnight, uh, three minutes. That's when President Reagan called the um, Soviet Union the Empire of what? Evil? And that a, a South Korean plane was shot by uh, the Soviet, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, and that was the beginning of the so called uh, Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars uh, uh, yeah. And that led to the collapse of the Soviet Union, of course, as we all know. Uh, and 1991 were 
for 18 minutes for me. And then the clock got closer and closer to midnight, and of course in 2002, that's after 9-11, of course, the clock went from 9 minutes to 7 minutes to midnight, <coughs> reflecting the threat of nuclear terrorism. The latest adjustment, so 2007, 5 minutes to midnight, reflected the coming of the second nuclear age, uh, St. Martin Reese, warning against increased nuclear proliferation across national borders, and what seems to be, in his own terms, an erosion of psychological barriers against the first use of nuclear weapons. I think that time, unfortunately, plays a role, he said. People have to be reminded. And he pointed, of course, to threats of nuclear proliferation both by, posed by North Korea and Iran, and the possibility that terrorists could kill quote, tens of thousands by detonating a nuclear device in an urban center. If anything, the, if anything, the unthinkable seems closer now in some ways than it ever was said Ted Martin. We live in dangerous times. However, what is remarkable, oh, that's a spoof, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what is remarkable, well, with this kind of um, joke is, is almost over, right? in a few months, four months, it will be over, so we have to take advantage. <laughs> is that for the first time in the history of the clock, other motives were put forward to account for the fact that the clock is now closer to midnight than it was in 1947. The scientists also considered unchecked, unchecked climate change. None of their business. They are uh, as, uh, uh, physical, I mean, uh, they were physicists, not meteorologists or etc. Uh, unchecked climate change through climate change, humans are collectively endangering our planet. And also, they mentioned, galloping advances in technology, including bio and nanotechnology, presented as new threats, more diverse and less practical than nuclear weapons, uh, Rees said. The same Martin Rees, in a recent stunning book, um, forecasts that the odds are no better than 50, 50 that humankind will survive to the end of the century, 21st century. The title of the book is explicit and the subtitle even more. Our final hour, the scientists', the scientists warning how terror, error, and environmental disaster threaten humankind's future in this century of Earth and beyond. Um, so Martin Rees is by no means isolated in his warning. Already in 2000, someone who is himself anything but an irresponsible leftist, one of the most brilliant American uh, computer scientists, called Bill Joy. Bill Joy is the inventor of the Java program, the language of the internet, uh, wrote a celebrated um, and much commented upon paper titled Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. The subtitle is explicit, robotics, genetic engineering, and nanotechnology are threatening to make humans an endangered species. All those scientists acknowledge today that there are two ways, well, we didn't wait for them to tell us that, we knew that for a long time ago. Uh, there are two ways, in intimately related, but what is remarkable is that the scientists themselves are scientists say that. So Intimately related for humankind to annihilate itself, it's a famous representation of the apocalypse. Well, the direct way, of course, through unlimited violence, weapons of mass destruction, internecine war, and the indirect way, through the destruction of the conditions that are necessary for the survival of the species. But what is absolutely important is that those two ways are intimately connected to each other. Uh, I represent this in this way. You have a loop from the destruction of nature to violence. Indeed, the first manifestations of global warming, climate change, 